Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a second year medical student and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between medical school and PA school. Um, so if you guys didn't know, I do offer pre-med advising and one of the questions that I often get asked is, should I do PA school? Should I do medical school? What are the differences? Is it easier to go to PA school versus med school? And so in this video, we're going to be answering um, a lot of those questions and kind of clarifying everything for you guys. And so throughout the video, I'm going to be talking about a lot of different numbers. I'm going to put them up here on the screen for you guys. Um, we're going to be talking about class size, acceptance rates, different prereqs that are required for med school and PA school, and kind of the differences between requirements. Because if you're preparing for medical school, there's going to be additional classes that you're going to need to take if you wanna to switch to PA school and vice versa from PA school to medical school. So it's really not that easy to switch from one to the other, but we're gonna talk about all of that in today's video. So the first thing that we're gonna get out of the way is the number of medical schools, the number of PA schools, kind of their acceptance rates, um, class size, all of those logistic types of things um, in order for you guys to kind of understand how difficult or how easy it is to get into one of these programs. So starting off with the number of schools for medical school and PA school. So there are 192 medical schools and there are 254 PA schools. So right off the bat, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, PA school has way more schools than there are medical schools, so it must be easier to get into PA school. And that's not really the truth in this case, and you guys are going to see in just a second. So in 2021, the amount of applicants for medical school was 62,440 applicants for medical school. And the number of applicants to PA schools was 27,280 applicants for PA school. So... As you guys can see, there are less applicants for PA school and more schools for PA school. So you're probably still thinking, wow, that really gives me a good shot at getting into PA school. Um, but here's the kicker. The average class size for medical school is 150 students. So that's the average. And the average class size for PA school is 40 students. So PA class sizes are very small compared to medical schools. Which brings me to the percentage of students that are accepted into medical school versus PA school. Now on average of the people who apply to medical school, 43% of them will be accepted into medical school. Whereas of the people that apply to PA school, only 37 will be accepted into PA school. And that comes back to having such a small class size, even though they have way more schools um, and less applicants, since the class size is so small compared to medical school, you get a much smaller acceptance rate into PA school. So right off the bat, just looking at the numbers, it is more difficult to get into PA school than it is to get into medical school. Now, that being said, there are some other differences that we're going to be talking about right now that will either make getting into PA school or medical school much more easier or difficult depending on kind of your extracurricular types of activities. But before we get into that, there is one major huge difference in my opinion that will make or break a lot of applicants, whether you're applying to medical school or PA school, and that is the entrance exams for each of these different programs. So for medical school, that's the MCAT, and for PA school, that's the GRE. Now for some PA schools, they will require the MCAT, but that's very few. And a lot of PA schools might even just accept the MCAT if you prefer to take the MCAT, or if you're gonna take the GRE as well as the MCAT. So definitely look at the individual school's requirements when it comes down to these exams. But in my opinion, the MCAT is gonna be far more difficult to do well on than the GRE. Now, that is simply my opinion. I didn't look up any sort of statistics on the MCAT versus the GRE, but the MCAT is notorious for just being a brutal exam, and it basically keeps a lot of very qualified students from getting into medical school. So if you're someone with a low MCAT score, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, Med School Mentor. It's where you guys can book a consult with me. Um, it's where I do all my pre-med advising. So if you guys need help getting into medical school, I can surely help you guys with that. 
As far as PA school, I don't do any sort of advising for PA school. I'm not in PA school and I don't know the ins and outs of PA school. So um, for that, I'm going to leave you guys to finding someone who knows more about PA school if you're struggling to get into PA school. Now going back to what I was saying about your extracurricular activities, there's one thing that really separates PA students from pre-med students and that is patient care hours or patient care experience. For medical school, you don't need that much. Yes, it's required. You do need some patient care experience, but the average amount of hours of this patient care experience that you need for medical school is between 100 and 200 hours. So right around 150 hours will be sufficient for medical school. Now, you're not gonna have to give medical schools a certain amount of hours. You're not gonna have to keep track of these things. All you're gonna have to do is on your application, say you are a scribe, you are a patient care tech or whatever, um, and then you give them the months that you were doing that. So I was a patient care tech from January to June, okay. That's all they want to know. They don't really care how many hours or whatever, but the average accepted medical student will have a right around 150 patient care hours. This varies tremendously um, from PA school. PA school is all about patient care hours. So if you are wanting to go to PA school, you need to focus a ton on your patient care experience. And this is something I wish medical schools would do because you, you get a lot of these pre-med students getting into medical school. Yes, they're intelligent. Yes, they know how to take tests, but their bedside manner sucks. They're not great with patient care, and they really just don't have that experience like PA students do. And I understand why PA schools require so many hours. You guys, as PA students, aren't going to have the amount of training that a medical student's going to have between four years of med school and three to eight years of residency, which is all required for us to learn how to be doctors. And for you guys as PA students, you guys don't have that luxury of time. So they want you guys to have as much experience coming into PA school as possible so that they don't have to invest all of that time training you guys how to interact with patients, which I think is something medical schools desperately need to change about the pre-med application process. We need way more patient care experience than they're requiring us to have. So props to you guys, PA students, you know, keep it up. You guys are making us med students look horrible, but in the end, we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to take care of patients and really that's all that matters. But going into the amount of patient care hours a pre-PA student needs, I found that the average accepted PA student needs right around 2,600 patient care hours, which is kind of mind-blowing in my opinion. And some of the things that people are doing to get these patient care experience hours are, most of them are CNAs, EMTs, and scribes. Now, if you ask me, I don't think being a scribe is patient care experience because you have no direct contact with taking care of patients. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash for saying that, but honestly, scribes, and this probably isn't all scribes, honestly. I'm sure there's doctors out there that let scribes do a little bit more than, than they probably should. But as a scribe, all you're really doing is typing up the doctor's notes. Um, and that's about it. But as a patient care tech, as a CNA, as an EMT, you are physically touching the patient, you are administering oxygen, you are helping the nurses, you're taking care of the patient. So make sure for your own benefit that you are in a position where you're learning how to take care of patients, that you have that hands-on experience because it's one thing to watch someone take care of a patient and it's another thing to actually have your own hands on the patient doing simple procedures, whether that's just rolling over the patient so that the nurse or doctor can see something easier, or whether that's administering oxygen, whether that's helping a patient walk to the bathroom, anything like that is great experience. But as a pre-PA student, you do need quite a bit of patient care experience. All right, one of the last things I'm gonna cover for this video are the different classes that you're gonna need to take, whether you're trying to go to med school or PA school, because they're not exactly the same. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning about switching from med school to PA school and PA school to med school. So you need to make sure that you're looking out for these specific requirements that these schools are 
requiring you guys to have in order to apply. Now, the majority of the classes that you need to take for PA school and med school are very similar. You need like general biology, general chemistry, you need math, um, but there are some classes that will vary from school to school and from program to program. So the biggest differences I found if you're applying to medical school, these are classes that you don't necessarily need to apply to PA school. So these classes are for pre-med students and not necessarily for pre-PA students. And those classes are OCHEM 1, OCHEM 2, and obviously both the labs that go with those, as well as Physics 1 and Physics 2 also with the two labs. Now there are gonna be PA schools that want you guys to take these classes, but as I was doing some research, as I talked to some of my PA friends, they did mention that these classes aren't really required anywhere. Um, but like I said, there are individual schools that will require maybe a semester of OCHEM because OCHEM generally is a prereq for biochem, which biochem I think is required at a lot of PA schools. Don't quote me on that. Um, like I said, I'm not a PA school expert by any means, so definitely do your research. Those are the classes that I think are required more for med school and less for PA school. Now, as far as PA school, there are some classes that are required specifically for PA school and not for medical school. And those classes are anatomy, physiology, microbiology, and more and more schools are requiring a semester of psychology. So these classes are not required for medical school. I know that for a fact, you don't need anatomy, you don't need a physiology. For medical school, they will teach you that stuff. However, that being said, I highly recommend taking anatomy and physiology before med school. It's gonna make your lives a whole lot easier, but you don't need it for med school. You do need it for PA school though. So guys, after watching this video, do you think it's easier to get into PA school? Do you think it's easier to get into medical school? Is one harder than the other? Let me know down in the comments. But my own personal feelings is it's much more difficult to get into PA school because of the limited number of spots in the schools as well as some of the requirements. That's a lot of patient care experience that you guys are gonna need and that stuff takes time. And most of us don't have that much time to invest into working a full-time job in the hospital as well as getting good grades in school. And medical schools pride themselves more on GPA and MCAT and less on patient care, whereas PA schools are more balanced. So they want a lot of patient care where you still need to have good grades and you still need a good GRE score. Um, so in my opinion, it's harder to get into PA school. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you're a PA student and some of these numbers or some of the things I said were a little bit incorrect, then let me know down in the comments as well um, so other people can see those types of things. As far as medical school, the numbers are very accurate. You know, I went through this process and I did it in a very roundabout way. So if you guys wanna see more on my story and how I struggled to get into medical school, uh, make sure to check out some of the videos on my channel. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys in another video.